Hey guys, it's Jen, and today I wanted to show you, I'm creating a layout using some of the Allie Edwards September releases, digital releases, and I wanted to show you how I'm going to just add some text onto this photo. This is a photo of my nephew on his birthday, his first birthday, and we have a chalkboard wall in our kitchen, and so he's just sitting on the table and the chalkboard wall's behind him, and I just am going to add some text above him, and I'm going to, I think that this is a perfect photo to do that because it kind of will look like it's written on the chalkboard wall, even though it won't be. And so I'm going to go ahead and open the image that I'm going to use. And I'm using the um, Hello Birthday Digitals. And there is this perfect one that says Cake for the Win. And so it comes in in black but I'm going to change it to white because I want it to look kind of like chalk on a chalkboard. And so what I'm gonna do is, for me, the easiest way to do that is first of all, move everything around. So um, I like to have everything floating in windows, so what I'll do is I'll go to Window, Arrange, and then do Float All in Windows, and then I have all of my photos floating as well as this text. So what I'm going to do is for me what I think the easiest is is to go to images or image adjustments and I just go to the hue saturation and I push the lightness up all the way and it turns it white. Um, for me that's just the fastest way. Um, there are other ways to do that as well. So now I'm just going to take and drag this over onto my photo and you can see it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Oops. And so I'm gonna just resize it. I'm holding down the shift key so that it, it sizes correctly. And I want it to be as big as it can with there still being a little bit of margin on the sides. And um, so there I have it. And I could leave it just like this. And I'm thinking though that I might want to lower the opacity just a little bit so that it looks like it's kind of written on the chalkboard. So what I'm gonna do is I just go down to my layers palette and I have the layer selected. So it's layer one here. And I'm gonna go to this opacity drop down, and I'm just going to move my slider until it's what I want it to be. So I don't want it to be too light because then you won't be able to really see it. That could be cool for a really subtle effect. But I want it dark enough that you can still see it, but I don't think I want it to be bright white. So I think I'm gonna do something like this. Well, about 50% opacity is probably good. So I think I like that. And now I'm ready to go ahead and print this off. I'm also printing off a bunch of two by two photos. So I'm printing this photo at six by eight and I'm printing off some two by two photos that I'll line up next to it. Kind of the progression of him eating the cake. So I'm gonna go ahead and print those off and I'll come back and show you how I'm going to create this layout. So I've decided that I also want to put the word birthday above the photo. And so what I'm gonna do is I have this Allie Edwards digital word art from that same um, set, that birthday, hello birthday set. And what I'm gonna do is just, I, I've opened up the PNG file and all I need to do is trace it so I can cut it out. Now I know my photo is six by eight and what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna pull my photo into Silhouette Studio so I can size this word birthday exactly how I want it. And I'm gonna open that file so this is a good way to size things, I think. Um, you can pull the photo right in and see exactly how big you want it. So now the photo's pulling in at much larger than what I want, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the scale window, and I'm gonna choose the width to be six, and then the height will change to eight, and that way I know that this is the size I've printed my photo, and so I can size the word birthday accordingly. So this opened in a separate little file, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste it, or cut and paste it. So I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna do Command X, and come to this one and do Command V, and then I can look and see how big I want this. So I'm gonna send this to the back so that this word sits on top. So now it will say birthday cake for the win. And I'm just kind of playing around with this to see how I want it to lay. And I like for things to kind of nestle in together. And so I'm trying to decide if, if I want it just like that. 
and I'm just going to cut it out in white. Uh, and then if I decide that I wanted a color, I can easily mist it or something like that. I think I am going to do about that size. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the photo. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to trace this. So I'm just going to the trace window, select trace area, and I'm going to drag it over the word birthday, unclick high pass filter, and then click on trace. And now I have my word birthday all ready to cut. Now you can see that when I cut this, let me zoom in here a little bit, that there's going to be these two little spaces. I think those are big enough to cut, but if you didn't want to, what you could do is just delete them. Um, by double clicking on it, it brings up the point editing and you can zoom in further and just click in these areas and choose delete point. See there, we've got that one done. I'll just go ahead and do it since I'm showing you. Just delete, delete, delete. Okay, since they're so small, that way you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and cut this out on my silhouette. Hey guys, so here I have my photos printed out. I accidentally printed my photos in black and white to begin with, and so I may end up switching these smaller photos for black and white depending on how the layout's looking because I think it still works. Um, because these are just close-up shots of him shoving the cake in his face, and so I think that's okay because you get the cake and the whole kind of effect on this photo. So I may end up switching those out, but I have not decided yet. And I've just pulled a bunch of random stuff from past story kits. I'm thinking that I might want to add in a bit of color with a little patterned paper strip at the top or something. Um, this is not red really but it kind of pulls that red color it's kind of that orangey color so I have my word birthday that I cut out on the silhouette and remember that I sized it to fit just right over my photo so let's make sure that that's going to work out and I'm just kind of peeling it up carefully um, and I have the little dot to my eye I don't want to forget but I'm gonna leave it on the mat for now until I decide what I'm gonna do so there's the word birthday. So we have birthday cake for the win. So maybe I'll move this down a little bit. And I'm okay if it covers up the period at the end. I may want to mist this just so that it has a bit of color so it stands out from the background, but I kind of like the, um, effect that it has just white on white too. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do a little misting on my background and that way if I don't like it then I can always um, just get a new sheet of paper. So I have all this stuff that I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and put you on fast forward while I play with this and I am already <laughs> going to, I'm already kind of realizing that I have more stuff pulled out than what I need and I'm going to want to try to incorporate too much. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so I'm going to play around for a minute trying to decide if I want to put something behind the word birthday. So I decided to use this spritz. This is from Shimmers and it's called Jenny B. Blue and it's just a light blue color. It does have a little bit of shimmer to it, but you barely even see it. And it just helps the word birthday to really pop out against the background. So I just put a little bit and I like the adding addition of the blue because there's little blue kind of sprinkle things on the giant cupcake in front of my nephew. So I have one of the older Allie Edwards kits, the firsts, I think it's first, um, and it had these little pinked silver foil words, and so I'm going to use three of those. And then I have this Studio Calico chipboard that my friend Carol sent me, and thank you Carol, and it's the perfect color of that orangey red, and it says can't stop, won't stop, and I thought that was perfect. The one also came from the Allie Edwards first kit. And I'm going to put it as kind of like a little banner nestled up next to the F in the word for. And I'm also cutting up an Allie Edwards journal card from the first kit. And it says number one good time. So I thought that worked perfectly here. And it brings in another little pop of that orangey red color. And I place that at the bottom of my photo. And I'm pulling out these are some little kind of journaling cards that came in the wild kit. And they have silver foil on the edges, which matches perfectly with the little circles that I'm going to use. And I thought it would be kind of fun to put, I was going to 
write my journaling directly on the photo, but I thought it would be fun to write it on that little journal card. So I'm going to do some stitching. So I'm going to place my little red strip at the top and I'm going to place this journaling card kind of nestled in uh, next to the words cake and four. And then I'm going to kind of pencil in my journaling to see if I have enough room. And then I'll take these over to my, or I, I'll take the, the layout over to my sewing machine so I can stitch down the journal card and the little red strip at the top. So just making sure I have enough room for the journaling that I want to say before I go ahead and stitch that down. And now I'm gonna move everything out of the way and pull over my sewing machine. I keep it on my desk, so I just to pull it toward me a little bit. And I keep white thread in it, so I'm just stitching right down the side of that, that card. And that makes it feel like it belongs there more than just having stuck it down um, because I cut off the edge, and so I feel like the stitching helps to ground it there. And I just did my stitch across the top as well. These are very imperfect stitches. And then what I like to do is pull the threads to the back and then just tape them down with a little bit of washi tape. So I'm just using some tape there to get that down. And I'll do it on the layout as well, on the back of the layout. And then I'm just gonna trim off the excess. And then I can decide where I want to put everything else. So now I'm going to play around with my uh, journaling card there. I'm gonna place down the number one and then I'll go ahead and write the journaling in with a pen. So I used a .08 pen to write year old. So now it reads one year old. And then I'm using my black Muji pen, which is a thinner pen, like a .3 or even smaller. It says .38, but I feel like it's more like a .2. Um, to write the rest of the journaling and I like the way that sets the two parts of text apart so um, one's in like a bolder uh, print the year old and then the other is just in my regular handwriting which is more curly and and stuff and that's in a thinner pen so I like that distinction and it's something that Allie does a lot too actually so here I'm just laying out my photos and I'm putting them in order of my nephew shoving the cake into his face and that bottom photo is him like saying ta-da almost like, yeah, I did it. I ate my cake. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting some thin foam adhesive on the back of the word birthday and I'm just going to pop it up where it's not touching the photo. So it's going to give it a little bit of a shadow and that's going to help it pop even more just because it's still white on white even though I did a little bit of misting on the background paper. So I'm cutting some of those in half using my Teflon coated scissors from close to my heart. And I will link to all available products in the video description below, as well as over on my blog, but I probably won't have the blog post up till later tonight or tomorrow if you're watching this right when it goes up. So I'm gonna place my photos down and I'm just using a dot runner adhesive there from Thermo Web. And I kind of placed them at jaunty angles and made it so that they all fit the length of that six by eight photo. And I'm going to place that can't stop, won't stop little chipboard piece right above the last photo and I think it looks really cute there. And I'm putting a little bit of foam adhesive on the back of um, number one good time that I put at the bottom of the larger photo. And now I'm just trying to decide where I want to put these three little pinked circles. And so I'm gonna have three um, clusters of embellishment, one up by the title, one over here on the left next to the uh, kind of strip of photos, and then one down at the bottom right of the large photo. And I am putting that up on foam adhesive as well. And I like the way that looks. And so now I'm just gonna pull out, I'm trying to decide if I want to add some like little tiny word strips in each cluster or what kind of I want to add to this. I pulled out my Tim Holtz little word stickers, but they were too long. The phrases on there are a little bit too long for this. I just wanted a couple of words here or there. And so I remembered that I had the word stickers from the Allie Edwards Firsts kit. And so I'm pulling a few of those off. And in the bottom uh, left cluster, I'm gonna add hashtag winning. And then in the bottom right, I will add first things first and love. And then up at the top, I'm going to add a few different ones. I'm going to add, I, I struggled to decide where I wanted to put them first of all, but I'm going to add hashtag FTW, so for the win, and then um, a little word that says first, and then one that says yes, yes, yes. 
and I like the way that ends up working out. And then I'm going to pull these little star stickers and these are from the craft, I think it was the craft story kit. Uh, and I'm gonna put a few in each one of these clusters as well. And that's almost gonna finish off the layout, but as you can see right now, I have a lot of space to the left of all of my photos. And I thought that when I started this layout that I would want all of that space there. But after I'm done adding these stars, I decide that I don't like that space. And so I'm going to search through my pattern paper scraps and I'm gonna put another scrap of paper to the left. And I really like, it's kind of just different. It, instead of matting the entire layout, just putting some on the top and the side. And I've done that before with the same pattern paper, but I'm using two different ones here. And I found this one from Crate Paper and it has like a little banner kind of across it. So I'm just cutting a piece from that. I'm gonna place it onto the left hand side of the layout and I'm gonna stitch that down just like I did with the red striped one on the top. So I just pulled my sewing machine over and just doing a straight line down that. And I really like the way that this ends up working out. And then what I'm gonna do is just tape the ends on the back like I did before. And then I'm going to kind of rough up the edges of the paper where um, the stitching is. And you'll see that here in just a second. And that is going to finish everything off. I hope that you've enjoyed and gotten some new ideas. If you want to check out all of the new products for September, you can go over to AllieEdwards.com and click on shop. And again, I will have detail, more details on my blog uh, probably later today or tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, just leave me a comment. We'll see you soon.